the Magog invasion. And it's very well known for two reasons. The first reason is that it's the occasion in which God himself intervenes in human history to quell this ill-fated invasion of Israel by Magog and his allies. And it, they're listed. Put Persia, Cush, Put, Libya, Gomer, Togarma, Meshech, and Tubal. And uh, the second reason this is so well known is because the passage does seem to anticipate the use of nuclear weapons. And for those two reasons, it obviously has attracted a lot of discussion from Bible buffs and others. So, and of course, one of the first things that hits us is these strange views, uh, uh, these strange words, these st uh, strange names. You ever wonder why the Bible uses these weird names? Well, it's really our fault, because we keep changing the names of things. There was a city called Petrograd, and then for many years it was called St. Petersburg. Then for many years it was called Leningrad. And now, of course, it's St. Petersburg again. There was a place called Byzantium that became the capital of the world. It was named Constantinople, and of course today it's called Istanbul. See, we keep changing the names of things. If you were Isaiah, and God called you to talk about the Persian Empire a hundred years before it shows up in history, how do you, as an, a prophet, write about that? How do you talk about that? And the answer is, you talk about their forebears. You speak of Elam, which is the ancestor to the Persians. You see, we don't change the name of our ancestors. So other things may change, but their ancestors don't. So that's a convenient way to refer to a people is by their forebears. And that's exactly what the Bible does. So let's just jump in and take a look at Ezekiel chapter 38 with a look at the first few verses. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Now, the chief prince, by the way, is prince of Rosh, or Ros, and uh, the Scythian Turi were in Crimea were so called. But we'll get into that. One of the first things that scholars stumble over is who is Gog? It's not, un it's not usual for the Holy Spirit to introduce a participant of some kind without some background. Gog just surfaces here. And so uh, there should be some preamble, there should be some linkage that we've overlooked. And there is, I was surprised to discover some years ago, there's a very strange anomaly in the prophecies of Amos. We're going to take a little look at Amos chapter 7 in the first three verses. In Amos 7, 1, in your King James, it reads something like this. Thus, uh, thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. And lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. Well, what on earth does that mean? That's pretty weird. The behold appears as a participle, but what on earth does the whole verse mean is the question here. Well, what makes it even more puzzling, in the next couple of verses, it's undone. See, Amos says, And it came to pass that when they had made the end of eating the grass of the land, then I said unto the o Lord God, Forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise, for he is small. And the Lord repented for this, It shall not be saith the Lord. In other words, whatever was prophesied, the Lord agrees he's not going to do. So that raises another question. Why on earth is it even in here then? The Lord prophesied it. Amos talked him out of it. He says, okay, I won't do it. Amos intercedes like Moses did back in Numbers 14, for example. And the Lord says, it shall not be. So the Lord changed his mind. And so the prophesied event, whatever it was, apparently never happened. So the question you can't help but ask yourself, why is this here? There must be an ulterior reason why the Holy Spirit... See, one of the principles I have learned over 60 years of study is everything in the Bible is there by deliberate design. So even though it's been nullified, it's still in the record and there's a reason for it. Well, I've read it to you the way it reads in the King James, okay? And so I want to show you what it looks like in the Greek. If we turn to the Septuagint, realizing that the Greek translation of the Old Testament, called the Septuagint, was, it was translated in Greek three centuries before, before Christ's ministry. And we have several copies of the Septuagint. Well, this is the way it reads in the Septuagint, okay? And uh, it's the basis, of course, of our English translation of, of the Old Testament text. In fact, the, the Septuagint um, 
was the one that the Christians adopt, adopted of the Old Testament among the, all through the New Testament. Well, here's the way it reads, in effect, in the Septuagint. It says, The Lord hath shown me, and behold, a swarm of locusts were coming. And behold, one of the young devastating locusts was Gog the king. Well, wow, that's sort of a surprise. There's a relationship to Gog. And subtleties of the Hebrew text is what makes it, which transforms it uh, 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 into something that makes sense here. Now, the Gog the king, now we're in, intrigued by that because we know from Proverbs 30, verse 27, the locusts have no king. So when you see locusts that have a king, you know they're not natural locusts. They're actually demons. It's an idiom for demons. And we run into that in Proverbs 30, 27, the locusts have no king, and so on. And so demon locusts do. We see that in Revelation chapter 9 in the first 11 verses. As you read Revelation 9, it says, The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given a key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke out of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and the torment was as the torment of a scorpion, which strikes the man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Heavy stuff. Strange chapter 9 of Revelation. But here's the point. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as crowns of gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And, here, and they had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Ah, and they had a king over them. These locusts did which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So the main point is, he, we discover here, these locusts are obviously not normal locusts. These are demons, and they do have a king. We discover that the demon king identity for Gog would solve several problems. It would supply the missing background of a linkage regarding the key eschatological per, uh, uh, personage. Here in Ezekiel, we have Gog, who is the king, the leader, if you will, of Magog. It's a demon title. Okay, that helps. It also solves another interpretive problem. It explains how both Gog and Magog can reappear after a thousand years. Well, at the end of the millennium, which they do in Revelation 20. Well, Magog, of course, is a people, so it can, it can survive you know, a thousand years. Gog is simply a title of a demon leader. So that clarifies that aspect of it. 